for more than five years now, I've dealt with hundreds of hundreds of clients, both good and bad. So today I'm going to tell you seven different things that you can watch out for to make sure you do not get a bad client. And we're also going to go over why you want to avoid a bad client and what makes a good client. Because trust me, you really, really do not want to have a bad client because it can literally ruin your career. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel and I've been working in the creative field of freelancing, specifically in social media and video content for over five years now. And I'm going to tell you why you need to get good clients and not bad clients. So the first thing to look out for is whether or not they have a clear vision. Having the client know exactly what goals they want to achieve is going to make it a lot easier to make sure that you guys are on the same page and misunderstandings are kept to a minimum. A client with a clear vision is going to be a lot easier to make sure that you and them are on the same page. It also means that they're going to have more realistic expectations and misunderstandings and miscommunication is going to be at a minimum. I mean, just think about this. How can a client with no vision or unclear vision be happy with what you're going to make for them? They don't even know themselves what they want specifically. So you are basically going to go in, do a bunch of work for them and they're going to either be not happy with it because they don't know what they want themselves. I mean, how can they be happy? They don't know what they want. They don't know what they're expecting, you know, and it's pretty much you're on a discovery mission with them to kind of figure out what it is that they want, right? And you're just going to end up wasting a lot of time. The client is going to be unhappy and it, even though it's not your fault, so avoiding a client who does not have a clear vision is definitely a must. Remember, it's the client's job to make sure that they know what they want and they have a clear vision. It's not your job. You're not creating something for yourself. You're creating something for the client. So make sure that the client has a clear vision. Making sure they have a clear vision is also going to make it a lot easier for you to create a plan and effectively execute on it and complete the project. You're going to be able to understand the entire scope of work better. And that means that you can give more realistic deadlines and nothing is better than giving realistic deadlines. I mean, how many people always say something is going to take X amount of time and they actually go over it. And, you know, it's actually kind of amazing to be able to provide and give work and complete projects ahead of time and ahead of schedule. But you can't do that if you don't know the actual scope of work because the client doesn't have a clear vision, right? They're just going to end up being angry. A bad client who doesn't have a clear vision isn't even going to understand themselves what a completed project is really going to look like. I mean, I've had it before where clients have said, yeah, uh, can you make this for me? I just know I want this kind of video. Well, I mean, I'm not you. I don't know what kind of message you're trying to portray or what kind of vision you want to achieve or what are your goals? You know, what are you trying to accomplish with this? I can't do this for you. And I made the mistake of still going through with clients who did not have a clear vision and it always ends horribly. I've had it before. We've had plans and entire storyboards and everything put together, but suddenly the client has had a change of mind, but I've already spent so much time and effort on this and it's annoying because they didn't have a clear vision. So they didn't know. And suddenly, you know, they're changing ideas and they got different things and different things they want to try out and all these. It's an absolute headache and a nightmare. And when a client has clear vision and they actually see that vision become a reality, it's going to be so much more rewarding for them. They're going to be really happy because it's their vision coming to reality and you've helped them provide this. A bad client who doesn't really even know what they want, you know, even if you provide an amazing finished product, if that's not what they really wanted in their vision or they're not really happy with it, then, you know, they're just going to be unsatisfied and it is going to be really, really bad for your reviews and just overall customer satisfaction. The second sign is respectful of your expertise. A good client is going to respect your expertise. When clients trust you and put their faith in you, it becomes a lot easier because there's a lot less resistance and everything just becomes smoother. It's almost like a team effort and it's a lot easier to get things done when everyone is on the same page and on the same team. Trust me. I've had it many times before where clients have wanted to shoot something a specific way or a certain shot or a certain theme or a certain color. And I've straight up told them like, hey, you know, I understand this is your idea and this is what you want. But in my professional opinion, I don't think that's going to work for, you know, reasons A, B, C and D or whatever or, you know, with previous clients that I've had. And a good client is going to say, yep, I understand this. You know, it makes sense. I trust you. If you say this is the better thing to do, then they're going to trust you and they're going to allow you to do that. A bad client is going to do the exact opposite and they're going to try and fight you on this. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, it's supposed to be a collaborative effort and you can't be fighting and arguing with your client because it's just not going to work when there's no trust. When a client respects your expertise, that means they trust you and they have faith in you, which means that they're going to be a lot less likely to micromanage you. And believe me, 
a client that micromanages you is an absolute pain in the butt. This lets you focus on doing your work and making sure the project is completed. You don't feel like you have someone breathing down your neck and watching over your shoulder. A bad client is going to the exact opposite of this. They're going to micromanage you. They're going to slow things down. They're going to try and put their input in every little thing. And it just slows everything down. And it essentially feels like they're paying you to basically babysit you, which I've had happen before. And it's not a fun experience because it really, you know, makes it feel like no one trusts you. They don't trust you. They don't want you to do what you want. They don't listen to you. You're kind of talking to a wall and it becomes very frustrating. And Regardless of how much experience and how professional you are, it is very, very frustrating to have someone not listen to you and completely ignore your advice. It's almost like you're talking to a wall and this is very demotivating and it actually makes you not want to you know, continue to work on the project at all. Also being respected and feeling valued is a huge morale boost. When I have clients who are constantly praising my work and appreciative of the time and effort that I put in to complete their projects, it always feels really, really nice when they give you a pat on the back or compliment your work and actually just motivates me to work harder. The client has got to trust you. Look at it this way. If a client, a bad client, doesn't trust you and doesn't listen to your expert advice, they're probably just going to end up with a worse product. And that actually looks negative on you because you've basically put your stamp and your name onto this product that you've given to this client. But the client has actually kind of gone off and fought you on this. And it's not really entirely, you know, what you're happy with. And it's going to degrade the quality of your work. And other people are going to see this because, you know, regardless of what you might think, clients are going to show their work, the work that you did, and other people are going to see it. And if the client has made some stupid decisions while working on this project, it's going to look negative on you because the other people who see this work are going to be like, oh, what the fuck is going on? Like, who made this? Why is this like this, right? So definitely be careful on this because it's going to definitely impact your portfolio, your career, and the way other people look and think about your work. Now, the third sign is a client that's collaborative. A good client is going to be very collaborative. They're always a joy to work with because they're going to be actively involved in the project. This is different from micromanaging. This is more so offering support, help, giving ideas, and it's just a joy to work with clients like that because it feels like they actually care about you know what you're doing and it feels more like a team effort like I mentioned earlier and allowing these clients to you know give input and be a part of the process of creating this project or achieving this goal that they want is going to make them happier as well bad clients who are uncollaborative are an absolute nightmare because you know first of all they don't really answer you to begin with they don't help you they don't clarify on anything or they just give up straight vague answers you know I've had it happen before where I've, I've asked a client hey you know I've got two different three different options or three different styles which one you'd like and they're just like oh yeah just pick one right well I mean you know this is your baby this is your product I'm doing this for you you know can you help me choose one and he said oh yeah whichever you think is best or whatever right and it's always a little bit sad because it feels like they don't really care and uh, I've actually had couple times before where it's actually led to a couple of arguments with clients because they just didn't care. And this means you're not going to be aligned and on the same page with your client, which again means a worse product. A good collaborative client also offers a ton of useful feedback. I mean, you do not know how many times I've had clients who have really helped me you know, elevate my craft and take my skills to the next level because they've actually offered genuine and very helpful advice on how I can improve my skills and just, you know, help people or future clients achieve a better end product. Having an uncollaborative client who doesn't really necessarily care so much, doesn't give any feedback, you say, oh yeah, thanks, okay, uh, yeah, good, blah, 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 whatever. And I've had uncollaborative clients before basically not give any feedback. You know, I mean, it's not necessarily super detrimental, but at the same time, you know, why would you want to work with someone like that rather than someone who's, you know, out there and more genuine and wants to help other people. I mean, you know, wouldn't it be great if everyone just helped each other a little bit? And most of the time, the super collaborative clients actually end up being friends, uh, recurring work, or they, you know, share me and put me into their network of other friends. So I get new clients that way. So having a collaborative client is really, really great because 
usually 99% of the time, it means that they have a very positive experience working with you. And that just means a more work, a better product and a better portfolio. And I've even had clients ghost me for a couple of months because they were just busy doing something else. They were that uncollaborative and it really seemed like they didn't care so much about a project. Can you imagine a project that's been ongoing for half a year and it all it needs is a couple of questions answered to be able to finally complete it or for them to actually look at the work that I've sent them? I mean, that's absolutely insane. Sign number four is that they are appreciative. Now, this is a little similar to previous points, but a good client is always going to be supporting you and going to be there to motivate you. I've had many clients before constantly, you know, applaud my efforts. They praise my work, my style, my quality of work. And whenever this happens, it's always a joy because it actually, you know, motivates me to want to work harder and create a better end product for the customer because a unappreciative client is kind of, you know, sad in a way you spend all this time and effort working for this person trying to create something that they're going to be happy with and if the whole time you just say okay or you know send the dreaded thumbs up emoji it is kind of disheartening because it feels like they don't care and it doesn't feel like they're acknowledging the time and effort that you're putting into you know create something for them Sign number five is they value a long-term working relationship. Good clients are always going to want to work long-term. Now, this doesn't mean you gotta not accept any one-off projects. Of course, we're all gonna get those, but having clients or focusing on clients who want a more long-term partner or a long-term working relationship is always better because the longer you work with someone, the more you get to understand them, the better you're going to become at working with them and the more efficient everything is going to be. And typically clients who want a long-term work relationship, I guess you could put it that way, they're going to be a lot more open to working together and they're going to be a lot more collaborative, right? So focusing on these types of clients is going to be just overall better because, you know, typically it actually results in a friendship um, as, as long as you're a little bit communicative and all that, you know, you can choose to be super professional and non-emotional, but I prefer to try and befriend my clients because when you are in a good relationship with them, they're 100% more likely to recommend you to everyone that they know who could use your services. And that's just a big plus because who doesn't want more clients and more money and a bigger portfolio? Clients who are looking for a one-off project are a lot less likely to do this. This doesn't mean necessarily that they are bad clients, but this is something to look out for because a good client in this sense can go really, really far. I mean, uh, some really, really good friends of mine were originally starting out as clients. So yeah, they've brought me in a lot of new customers as well. Now, clients who want a one-off project are a lot less likely to do those things because again, they're just looking for a one-off project. This doesn't necessarily mean that they are a bad client. It just means that you know what they have or what they need done is a one-off thing. So again, that doesn't give you enough time, in my opinion, to form a good relationship unless it's a very, very big project. But typically, you know, once again, that would come through a recommendation. If I have a really, really big project that's very important, I'm probably going to ask my friends for a recommendation and not someone random. So yes, one-off clients are a lot less likely to recommend you to other people and they're in general, just a lot less likely to give you a review and they're a lot less likely to even remember you and your services. So even in the future, if you know, they're, you're the only person that they know who does this specific thing, they might not even remember you. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Sign number six is they understand your value and rates. A good client understands your value and rates. I've had clients before literally write me blank checks for projects because they trusted me, they understood my experience and expertise and the knowledge and the fact that I can complete this project. So they don't haggle me and they don't bug me for, oh, can we make this cheaper or can we do that? You typically want to find clients who are looking to do the best thing and money not necessarily is no object, but they're not going to cut corners to reach their end goal. These clients are always amazing to work with because there's usually a very high level of trust and respect between you and the client. Typically, you're not going to get these kind of clients right away unless you have a really, really big portfolio. These types of clients are usually through a relationship that's built over time. Again, trust and mutual respect. But if you have a really good portfolio, then you may be lucky and land one of these clients where they're like, yep, 
no problem. We don't want to cut any corners. You know, whatever needs to be done or whatever needs to be paid will be paid. And that's just a great joy because it allows you to really flex your creative muscles and your skills. A bad client is going to be super budget conscious. Now, of course, if you're starting out and you're in your infant stage of, you know, your freelancing career, you don't really have a portfolio, then you're going to have to deal with a bunch of these people. But at the same time, you want to try and avoid them because the way I see it is clients who are super budget orientated and they don't really understand your value as a professional and as an expert are going to try and cut corners. And not only does this make the end product worse and the client is more likely to going to be unhappy with it, it's also going to look bad on your portfolio because the end product is going to look cheaper and it's not going to be as good as it could have been, right? So again, everyone who sees that is going to think these things, maybe not obviously, but subconsciously and that's something that you really, really want to avoid when a client is, you know, willing to cut corners to obtain their goals. Now, of course, not every client has a million dollar budget for something, but look at it this way. Imagine you had to build two houses, one with a budget of $4 million and one with a budget of $1 million. Which house do you think is going to look better? Of course, the $4 million house. Now you can mess it up sometimes, but 99.99999% of the times, the house with the bigger budget is going to look better and it's just going to be better. The structure is going to be better. Everything is going to work better. It's going to be, you know, cleaner and nicer on the inside as well as the outside. So look at it that way. The better clients who have a higher budget, the better the end result's going to be, the better it's going to look on your portfolio and the more higher tier clients you're going to be recommended to. Now the seventh and final sign is payment. A good client is going to pay on time and they're actually going to try and make it as easy as possible for you. Most of my favorite and good clients have actually gone out of their way to pay me in the method that is best for me in terms of, you know, how long it takes, the fees and what's convenient. They've actually gone out of their way to learn this new payment system or try a new payment system to ensure that I've been paid. And this is a really, really good sign of a very good client who really respects you and understands, you know, how difficult it can be for you. And this is a really big indicator for whether or not they are a good client because they've gone out of their way to ensure that you're paid and that you're settled and that you're happy. And I've had clients where I just send them monthly invoices based on the work that I've done and they just pay them right away. No questions asked, not, you know, trying to haggle me or not trying to say, oh, can we delay this or that? They understand that I have bills to pay and I need to survive as well. And it's a non-negotiable that they just ensure that you get paid. And a bad client basically does the exact opposite of this. They try to only use their methods that they have set up, even if it's inconvenient for you. They're not in a rush to pay you. I mean, I've had some clients that I've had to chase for almost a year to get paid. Yeah, that bad, even with late fees. They don't care. They're just saying, all right, well, I'll just pay you whenever I get to pay you. And you can imagine how stressful and how much of a nightmare that kind of client is. And so those are seven things you need to watch out for when you're onboarding a new client. If you found this helpful at all and actually maybe helped you become a better client yourself, then please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys around.